Hi all, this is a medium difficulty GMAT data sufficiency question. This DA question is primarily from statistics. Expects you to know a way to compute standard deviation of a set of numbers, right? It's a slightly concept intensive question. Knowing the formula, knowing the method to compute standard deviation is necessary to be able to solve this question. Let's get started with the question. What is the standard deviation of four numbers P, Q, R and S is what the question is. Let's look at the statements in a while. These are the five answer options. They remain unchanged for any DS question. What's the question? The question is, what is the standard deviation of four numbers P, Q, R and S? We should say, hey, the standard deviation is equal to 18. The standard deviation is equal to root 20. Some such answer is what we are expected to come up with, right? So we are looking for a number as the answer. When is the data sufficient? It's a what question. Answer is number. The data is sufficient when we have a unique value. If I'm able to say, the standard deviation is 7. The standard deviation is 7.93. One single number, the data is sufficient. Let's spend a minute on recapping the formula to compute standard deviation. Couple of ways of doing finding out the standard deviation. The first method is basically you would have found out the mean, step 1. Step 2, compute the deviations, which is subtracting the mean from each of the terms. Step 3, squaring the deviations. Step 4 is computing variance, which is nothing but average of the squared division. Pick the squared divisions, find the average of that. That is what your variance is. Standard division is square root of that. The same thing has been distilled into a formula, and that formula is basically this. Standard division is mean of square of numbers. Mean of square of numbers. So if I have numbers A, B, P, Q, R, S is what they have said. P, Q, R, S. Square of these numbers is P square, Q square, R square, S square. Mean of this. Basically, add these and then divide it by 4. So, mean of square of numbers. Numbers, square of numbers, sum of the squares of numbers, divided by the number of terms. Mean of squares of the num square of numbers. Minus square of mean of numbers, which is P plus Q plus R plus S is mean of numbers. Divided by 4 is mean of numbers. The square of that. The square root of this is essentially going to give us the standard deviation. Acute with this knowledge, this is essential to be able to solve this question. Let's take a look at statement 1. Statement 1 basically tells us the sum of P, Q, R and S is 24. So essentially P plus Q plus R plus S is equal to 24. Probably because I've written that formula, I'll go one step further and say divided by 4 is equal to 6. So look at what we needed. We needed the P plus Q plus R plus S by 4 square p plus q plus r plus s by 4 if it's available we can square it and find out this component is what statement 1 tells us so i'll call it as part 2 of that formula right part 2 of the formula comes from statement 1 but we don't have part 1 so we can't proceed one alone is not sufficient rule out answer options a and d let's evaluate statement 2 alone what does statement 2 tell us the sum of the squares of p q r and s is 224 Squares of P, Q, R and S. P square, Q square, R square, S square. Okay. Sum of the squares of these numbers is equal to 224. If you go back to the formula, the formula essentially said the mean of the squares of the numbers. So if you know the sum, that divided by 4, P square plus Q square plus R square plus S square divided by 4. 200 by 4 is a 50. 56 is what we have as this value. So if you recall the formula, first part of the formula, we have this, right? This is part 1 of the formula. We get it from statement 2. Part 2 is not available with statement 2. So 2 alone is not sufficient. Let's rule out answer option B. Now that we know that from statement 1, we have part 2. From statement 2, we have part 1. This is a formula that we have. So we know that for this part, Square of the mean of the numbers. Mean of the numbers is 6, right? This part. So this is 6 square. Sum of the squares of P, Q, R and S. P square plus Q square plus R square plus S square. Sum is equal to 24. So the mean is equal to 4 divided by 4, which is equal to a 56. So this is 56 minus 6 square. Square root of 56 minus 36. Root 20 is the answer. Actually, you don't have to solve this. You know that, hey, this gives you part 1, this gives you part 2. So you'll be able to find out a unique value. That's all that we are interested in. Statements together have given us a unique answer. Together, the statements are sufficient. Choice C is the answer to this question. I'm sure you're probably aware of it. If you're not aware of it, from the 7th of November, you'll be able to take the focus edition of the GMAT examination. 
the focus edition of the GMAT examination has something very unique. It basically has a reduced number of questions and a lesser timeline to basically complete the examination. So your fatigue levels both physically and mentally are going to be a lot lesser. Key changes, sentence correction is out, AWA is out, geometry is out. What makes this version a little more interesting in addition to what has gone out is basically that IR takes precedence in a great way as in it, its dominance is suddenly increased compared to what it was in the classic edition. In the classic edition, the IR section was a standalone one. The marks that you got there, the points that you got there, 1 to 8, the score in IR basically was a standalone thing. It was like you really did not care much about it as what many students or aspirants looked at it. Now IR has been integrated as a part of the data insights section. Of the 20 questions in data insights, 13 to 14 will be IR and 6 to 7 will be data sufficiency, the ones that you looked at right now. right? So this section, whatever you score on a range of 60 to 90, is going to count with the equal weightage as that of the verbal and the quant section. Quant section, verbal section, DA section, each have one third, one third, one third weightage into your final 205 to 805 score. The original scoring system was 200 to 800. They just made the new scoring system to end in 5 with the same interval of 10 points between each score points. Right? So 205, 215, 225. Similarly, it will go all the way up to 785, 795, 805. So to this main score, your IR component, which is a part of DA, is going to count toward. So you're better off that you don't have to study for geometry, you don't have to study for sentence correction, you don't have to write an essay, and it's a much shorter version of the examination. It's a two hour, 15 minute examination, 345 minute section. It is going to get a little more interesting or tougher from the point of view that IR is going to be an integral component. You cannot give it a stepmotherly treatment. It becomes an integral part of your GMAT score. Best wishes.